So what is a ground fault circuit interrupter? This little guy right here is a ground fault circuit interrupter, otherwise known as a GFCI receptacle. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so as you can see right here, the GFCI receptacle has a, a different physical appearance than the conventional uh, wall receptacle. Now, the GFCI receptacle is also identified by its test, the black button, and reset button, the red button right here. That's how you can tell you have a GFCI receptacle in any particular area. So how does a GFCI receptacle work? Well, in the event of a ground fault, a GFCI will trip and quickly stop the flow of electricity to prevent serious injury to occupants of the home. Okay, so what is a ground fault? And what does that have to do with the GFCI receptacle? Well, I'm gonna to try to explain that. It's not easy to explain. Instead of following its normal safe path, the electricity runs through your body. It passes through your body into the ground instead of using its normal safe path back through the electrical circuit. So to give you an example of how this here protects you from this being faulty, if the wiring inside the toaster, like the wiring here going inside, or if the cord itself gets frayed or damaged and has a bare hot wire touching the toaster frame, or if uh, there's two separate pieces of wire in here with an insulation over them. If this cable was worn out and those wires touched each other, or if only one of those wires touched this frame, that can cause a ground fault, which means if this is plugged in to the wall and there's a ground fault, this thing's energized, which means if you touch it, you're gonna get shocked. That's where the GFCI comes in. So if this is plugged into here, and this here, this GFCI is working properly, and there's a ground fault, as soon as you plug this in, it's gonna trip this GFCI. That's how this works. So, if you were to plug a faulty toaster into this receptacle that's not GFCI protected, you would get shocked. And if you left it in there, every time you came back to it, you'd probably get shocked again. Okay, so the GFCI receptacle also protects you from uh, water. So in the event, like you're in the kitchen washing dishes and you, you reach up to unplug something real quick or plug something in and you're not thinking properly because your hand's wet, it's, a, it's also going to trip and protect you from getting shocked. So um, that's why these are uh, required in wet areas of a home. Now, this little square on the bottom corner here um, that's typically lit, but of course we're not connected to an electrical system, that's why there's no power to it, there's no light on there. So when that, when that light is uh, solid green, that means the receptacle has power, and if it turns red, that means it's tripped and there's no power. Now another thing to know is, if it trips and then you unplug whatever was plugged into it, to reset it and you push the reset button but it won't reset then that means this is probably faulty and it needs to be replaced so now you're probably wondering well what parts of my house should I have a GFCI receptacle well um, the main place for a GFCI is in a wet area you know within a few feet of a wet area so for example your kitchen sink uh, if you have receptacles on the left side of the sink and on the right side of the sink um, you definitely want to have those GFCI protected. Um, and, you know, if you have a, an island in your kitchen, you're going to want to have that protected as well, especially if it has a sink in it. And uh, another area would be uh, laundry room. Um, some laundry rooms have a laundry sink right next to it, so any receptacles in that area uh, should be GFCI protected as well. Garage, definitely. Um, a garage... Uh, can be exposed to the weather so you definitely want to have GFCIs in the garage and a common problem in a garage with GFCIs is there's only one GFCI 
and there's five other receptacles that are not protected. So that's typically something I find in a home inspection. So you want to make sure all the garage receptacles are either connected to one main GFCI or they all have their own separate GFCI, whatever it takes to, to get that accomplished. Uh, another area would be outside. Outside is very important. Um, anything that's got to do with the weather. So any wall receptacles uh, should be GFCI protected and they should also have outdoor plastic covers in case you plug stuff in, it'll stay dry when it's raining. You can't just, you know, take the, uh, the kind of covers that just flip open and you put the plug in, well now the plug, the outlet, everything's exposed to water. So that's not a good way of doing it. They sell plastic covers that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, very inexpensive, 30, maybe 20, 30 bucks and um, you just install that where your old cover was and then you can plug stuff in for permanent for for plugs that are going to be in there permanently like for landscape lighting or um, you know a water pond or, or something like that so just put one of those in and make sure everything outside is gfci protected if you have a refrigerator in your garage as well as your kitchen make sure those are not on gfci receptacles because if they are, and in the event that GFCI gets tripped somehow, and you're not home, and you don't realize it tripped, you may lose all the perishable food inside your refrigerator or freezer. So I've been to several houses where there's also a, um, a refrigerator in the garage, or sometimes a freezer. So you want to make sure those are not plugged into a GFCI receptacle, because that could be expensive to replace all that perishable food. Okay, so let's talk about some what ifs. What if, let's say your kitchen counters have about five or six receptacles. You have five conventional ones and you have one GFCI. So you may be wondering, well, do I need to add five more of these? Well, not necessarily. You wanna test these ones to see if they're connected to this one. And it's a simple test you can do by yourself. You don't need any kind of special tools or electrical background for this. It's very simple. So first thing you do is plug in an appliance like a toaster or a blender or something easy to move around. Plug it into here, make sure there's power to it, and then unplug it and then hit the black test button and this will turn this off, which means no power here. Now take that same appliance and plug it into each and every one of these other conventional receptacles in the area. If there's no power to any of these, that means they're all connected to this, which means they're all protected by this GFCI, which is a good thing. So now to double check everything, go ahead and reset this, plug in that appliance, make sure there's power here, now go back to all of these and you should have power on all of these other receptacles. If that's the case, then you tested it properly and now you can confirm that all these other conventional receptacles are all protected by this one GFCI. So if any of those other receptacles in the future don't have power, you know you have to come back here and reset this. Okay, there is such a thing as GFCI redundancy. So now hear this. Attention homeowners, otherwise known as DIYers and handymen. If you are in a particular room, such as a kitchen, this is where I mostly find this problem. If there's a GFCI in place and it protects all the other regular conventional receptacles, you do not need to put one of these in place of one of these. They're already protected. Oftentimes, I find out when I'm inspecting the house that there's a main GFCI and then all these ones are also GFCIs, which is ridiculous. It's a waste of time and money. You don't need that because they're already protected by this main one. One is enough if it protects all of them. That's it. Okay, so now I'm gonna confuse you a little bit more. You're probably wondering what this is. Well, what this is here on the right is a uh, GFCI circuit breaker as opposed to a GFCI receptacle. Now these you're gonna find in the electrical panel, main panel or sub panel. Um, when you see it, you're only gonna see that when it's in a panel because all of this is just pushed in between other breakers. So 
basically, it just works like a regular circuit breaker. You know, it's on, it gets tripped, it's off. To reset it, you want to push this button to reset it, and then you turn it back on. Now, some homes have these. Some homes do not. Why? I think it was just a decision somebody made at the time when the electrical was installed, or if maybe the house was remodeled, or one or the other. It's, I don't really have an opinion on one being better than the other. Just letting you know that your home may have this, or it may have that, or it may have both. Okay, so this here is an old GFCI, which may be from the 1980s or 1990s, um, that I actually uh, replaced in my own house. And if you look closely, you'll see there's a test button and a reset button. And in between there, it says test monthly C instruction booklet. Now hang on to that thought. Now this here is a newer self-testing GFCI. And it's hard to read, but it also says right at the top under my thumb, test monthly so this is something that most people are not aware of because when I bring it up to people at home inspections they're like huh what <laughs> so the manufacturers require that these all be tested every month so every month they want you to push this test button and reset it now this here being a self-testing GFCI, what that means is it tests itself periodically. And if it, if it comes up where it, it's faulty, it'll just stop working. So it tests itself. And if it does come up faulty, it'll turn red. And then it won't allow you to reset it. So that's my understanding of how this self-test operation works. Okay, so once again, we have an old GFCI receptacle and we have a new GFCI receptacle. So how do you know when to change the old ones? Well, if it fails and doesn't work anymore, that's a good time to change it. But what's the life expectancy on these? That's kind of unclear. So I looked up the warranty on this one and these come with a two year warranty. So that's gonna give me an indication that, hey, maybe, <laughs> Maybe they're only meant to last a few years. Um, I've heard other people say, oh, like every 10 years, replace them if they haven't broken or anything like that. So now this older one is not a self-testing. This newer one is. So like anything else that you upgrade, you're gonna get the latest technology. And that's what this one has. This is awesome, I think. It tests itself, that's pretty cool for 20 bucks. Um, this one here, just an old obsolete one. It was still working, by the way, when I replaced it but I upgraded some electrical in my garage and it was just smarter just to get rid of it before it failed. So that's that. Okay, everybody, uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this uh, video here about GFCI receptacles. I hope you've learned a bit from this. I hope you can better understand what I mean about why you should have GFCI receptacle protection in your house and around your house. Um, it's just a good thing to have to keep your family safe from uh, accidental shock. So hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one.